This time on Keeper of the Mountain, we're going to look at another aspect, or a very important aspect anyway, of bushcraft, and that is log joinery. Now we use small logs to build shelters, uh, any very tables, you know, various kinds of structures that we need to just just to make things work better. And there's several different ways you can join logs. You can wrap them with cordage. You can use, uh, you can make cordage out of like say cedar bark, uh, different kinds of grasses. Depends on where you live and where you're going to be. But uh, the, the part that I'm going to be looking at is how you join and, and fit the two pieces of wood together, not how you attach them together. Uh, so what we're going to do this time on every one of them, we're going to use uh, a piece, one piece of all thread, three eighths all thread, to hold each of these joints together. And then we're going to analyze which one's better. So let's get started. In order to do this, I've selected six logs, all of relatively the same size and length. A couple of them are a little smaller, but I'll pair those together. And we'll try all three different major styles of joinery for bushcraft, and we'll see which one works best for your situation, because every one of them has their place. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the largest logs and do the least stable I uh, joint with that one, and then the sm next size down of the, the next most stable, and then the most stable I'll do with the small logs. And that way you'll see that how much superior the stable one is over the, uh, you know, the, the less stable ones. The first one we're going to do is the basic crossing of logs. And, and that's, you know, you've seen it, you've probably even done it where you cross two logs and you just wrap it together. But in this case, like I said in the introduction, we're going to hold it together with a bolt. Just so all the joinery is the same. Uh, just using a bolt will take out the, the inequality of the, of the bindings. One of the advantages of this style of joinery is that it's simple. It hardly takes any tools, especially if you're just using cordage. You really don't need anything but a knife to cut your cordage when you're done. As you can see, technically it's it's pretty straightforward. And we'll tighten this down nicely so that so that there's no question as to you know that it's as tight as you can possibly get it. Okay, there you have it. And part of the part of the nice thing about this, like I said, is it's super simple. It's easy to do, but part of the problem is the ability for it to rack. As you can see, this twists pretty easy. Now, granted, it wouldn't be as bad if you'd wrapped it with rope. But the point is that all of the anti-racking uh, that you know, to prevent it from twisting that you have, depends solely on the strength of what you use right here to hold them together. So if it's the cordage you're using, it's the cordage that's keeping it from slip, from racking. And if it's a bolt, it's the tightness of the bolt. If it's a nail, it's the nail. You know, it's, it's not the logs. The logs aren't helping you at all with the racking. So this isn't the strongest way, but it is sufficient in a lot of ways. I mean, hey, if it works, and if it fits your circumstances and your, and if it's all the tools you have, it's better than not having a shelter at all. So if you you find yourself out there in the woods with no, uh, with no tools, shame on you at first for not being prepared. But you know things happen, circumstances get in the way. You can do this with cordage made from bark and logs that you've found. You don't even have to cut them, you just find them and break them to the length you want, or just deal with the length that you get. And you can make a shelter this way, and it is sufficient for short term. In the next video, we'll up our game a notch 
and we'll go with the simple lap joint. See you then.